speak loud. Appreciate that. I love those verses on things. I tell you, we need to come through this door, these doors. I know it's November, and it's thank we think about Thanksgiving, give thanks. We ought to do it all the time. We'll uh, we'll go another round of this. That cow, we're thankful for cow, aren't you? Amen. Amen.
song and oh God, I love Jesus. I just thank him. What would our life be like without that man named Jesus? I mean, think about it just a moment. If you never had an encounter with Jesus, you never knew anything about Jesus, what would your life be like? I'll tell you, it'd be totally different, wouldn't it? Uh, something we ought to be thankful for. But we'll let them say their verses here. Go ahead.
those young people and the Bible verses they shared. And Appreciate the Lord, don't you? Appreciate how good He is, and appreciate Him, him uh, using our church and him being present in our church and still drawing folks toward Him. Um, just pray the day's the day. And, uh, even if somebody may be saved this morning, they to come and get right. Who knows? I really believe uh, this morning's message uh, really could be a help to everybody here. Anybody got anything on your heart? We'll be in Ezra chapter number five this morning. Anybody else have anything to be a the Lord this morning? He desires our praises and he desires our thanks. All right, Ezra chapter number five. We've been going through this series in the book of Ezra here. And uh, this morning we are going to be in Ezra, but we'll also be in the book of Haggai. Now, you may want to be hunting that. I've got mine already marked. Find uh, Matthew and then Malachi. Go back, you'll find Haggai, Zechariah, and Haggai. We'll be there this morning as well. I know it sounds funny that a series on that we're doing looking at Ezra would be in Haggai, but it'll make sense to you when we read this first verse. Um, desire your prayers. We just pray that the Lord would uh, get honor and glory here. This morning, verse number uh, Ezra five, verse number one, it says, "Then the prophets of Haggai, then the, pro the prophets Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Iddo, uh, prophesied unto the Jews that were in Judah and in Jerusalem in the name of God of Israel, even unto them." And let's just pray, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we're just thankful that you do raise up prophets, Lord, you raise up. Uh, preachers here this day, Lord, and you raise up men of God that even when we go through slumps and we go through things and we see that a work that needs to be accomplished here in our text and the rebuild of that temple, we see that there was an adversary come and a fight that, uh, that went against the work and the calls of the Lord that you raise up some prophets. You raise up some men to get things back on track, Lord. And it isn't nothing about the men, but it's about you and getting your word across. And I thank you, Lord, for it. Thank you, Lord, for the calling on my life as a, a pastor, as a preacher. And Lord, wouldn't take anything for it. And Lord, you just use us this morning. No doubt there's somebody in our midst that's come in that needs to be stirred or maybe just needs to hear a thought from you this morning. And let me just be that willing vessel that uh, I just prophesied, say what would need to be said this morning and preach, preach uh, unconditionally just 
uh, unreserved exactly what you'd have. You just be with us, meet our needs in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful that the Lord does give us messages and give us things that we truly need when we need it. And that's exactly what's happening in this text. And I know uh, it's just one verse here this morning, but we read here that the prophet Haggai, the prophet, and Zechariah, uh, they prophesied unto the Jews. Now, we've been, to get us to where we're at, we look back a few weeks and we looked at the recipe and how there had to be that decree from the king, a decision by those elders, and then other people got in board. And I'll tell you, we always want to see the church grow, and we always want to see more people on board working for the cause of Christ. But then we looked in the second week of how to give, to give willingly, give freely, and give after our ability. That's how the Lord wants us to give. It's nothing special. As long as you get up and sing and do what you're supposed to do, the best you can do, that's all that really matters when it comes to the Lord. But then we looked at the heart of restoration, and the heart of it is where they started the actual rebuilding, and they got to the altar and, and really uh, got all excited and, and, and looking at this altar. And they, we looked at the foundation and how they reestablished the feast, and they re started relaying that foundation, I'll tell you. How important. You don't have to have a temple. Don't have to have this church building to be able to worship God. And we've seen that in that text. Now last week we looked at opposition and how there was opposition. Let me just say, still to this day we have opposition. And in the text we seen last week that they, uh, this opposition came in the form of help. They said, hey, let me build with you. Let me work with you. Hey, I'm, I'm after the same God you're after. But there was somebody, there was these chief elders who said, no. You're not helping us. No, nope, we don't need your help. If we're going to compromise what the Word of God says, we're not going to, uh, we're not going, and that's exactly what they want. They want to blend, mix in, they want to blend in, and there needs to be a definite uh, difference in us and the world is what we looked at last week. Now, we've seen that their restoration and this rebuilding of the temple, it came to a halt last week. It came to a stop. Now, I ended last week saying this, it's God's Word. And God's work will continue. And that was some foreshadowing to what we're seeing this week. And this week I see these Samaritans, their offspring, and they wanted these, they had these mixed marriages between the Jews and these Assyrians of the northern captivity, and they wanted to join up. They wanted to join. And what happens is they oppose the work. The Samaritans oppose the work. In other words, you start blending with the world, you being a Christian, start mixing with the world, the world opposes the work here at the church. They oppose the things of God. And if you mix with the world, God's work will halt, it will cease, uh, at least when it comes to you and his work. And But what happens here, and we've seen that at the end, we've seen it actually in Ezra 4 and verse number 24, then cease the work of the house of God. Now you think about it. We just talked about how excited they were. They were celebrating at the foundation. They were celebrating at just what all, some were even in tears because they seen they missed all these years. We should have been winning souls. We got lazy and we wasn't. And we should have been building. We should have been doing. And, 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 and we should have had fruits. And we don't have the fruits to, 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 to bear that we ought to have. And they ended up, uh, they were celebrating some in tears. And then they get to this point. Where they cease the work. How in the world did they get to that point? From celebrating to tears of joy, to tears of just hurt that they hadn't been building, and now here they are in verse number 24, cease the work. They cease the work. But here's the thing. In verse number 1 of chapter number 5, it says the prophets Haggai, the prophet and Zechariah, what happens here is God raises up a prophet. He raises up a man that says, hey, I need somebody that's going to stand in the balance. I need somebody that's going to preach. I need somebody that's going to uh, get this work continued. Not that the preacher's going to do the work or not that the prophet here is going to do the work, but I, I believe he needs somebody that's going to be my spokesman. And that's what he does. Now, we're going to have to look at the book of Haggai to understand that, and that'll be chapter number one. We see the, the, the command to rebuild this temple. I'm going to title this message here. I would say the restoration is renewed. That rebuilding of the temple is going to get renewed. 
It ain't, they done started at one time, but I'm getting ready to renew it. Let's look at Haggai in chapter number 1 and verse number 1. It says, In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shelethiel, the governor of Judah, and Joshua, and Josedek, and the high priest, saying. So here comes, uh, here comes Haggai. And he's coming with, they're coming with a message here, and it's coming from the Lord. And it, it, it says that here in the text. In verse number 1, it says, came the word of the Lord. Aren't you glad that in a dark moment, aren't you glad when, when things, it seems like, are spiraling out of control? Aren't you glad that sometimes that when, when it seems like there ain't no way out, there ain't no escape, and there ain't no way to get back on track? Oh, my gosh, it's unraveled. My gosh, we were doing so good. Now look. That the word of the Lord can come. The, Lord, the word of the Lord can be sent from heaven above. And it gives them the command to rebuild. It says in verse number 1 in the middle of that verse. In Haggai the prophet says came the word of the Lord. It came the word of the Lord. In verse number 2 look what it says. Thus speaketh the Lord, the Lord of hosts saying. The people say the time is not come. But the time that the Lord's house should be built. What's being said here is we're at the time where the work of the Lord, it, it ought to be the, our first priority. The work of the Lord has to, has to uh, come to fruition. In other words, uh, the time the time has not come, but the time is come. You say the time has not come. You say that there's been this adversary, but guess what? The time is here, the time is now, and the time has come where the work of the Lord has to continue. And he sends a man of God to say that and tell the people. So the work of the Lord is in this standstill. And in verse number 3, look what it says. And then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet saying. So they're in this place and they say the, word, the work is not. There's, there's no time for the work of the Lord. We've had this opposition. We've had a battle. And then in verse number 3 it says. And then come. The word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet saying, Is it time for you, O ye that dwell in your sealed houses, and to this house lie ways? See, God it works even when they're not working. See, in verse number two, it says the time has not come. They say it's, it's not here. You're not working. You're not, uh, you're not building on this temple. They're not restoring what God wants to be restored. And then he raise up, raises up that prophet. He raises up that prophet with the word of the Lord. It's nothing much, nothing more than the, the word of the Lord, and that's exactly what we need. And God wants a temple built. God wants uh, this work to be renewed. And God's going to send that messenger. He sends his word to the people to say, hey, I want you to renew this building. And I'll tell you, look around this church, and God's not done with this place. He's not finished. He's not, he's not even close to being finished. And I believe the same message goes to us right now. And God's sending a message. And he's sending a message to us. And he says, yes, you had that revival. Yes, you've been through a lot since. But you can either pout about it or you can keep on going and keep on working. And I'm telling you, we just need to keep on going. I know in the back of some of our minds, we're thinking, well, it's getting to be winter. It'll be cold. Well, what are we going to do? Are we going to give up for six months and wait till it gets warm? No, there's a work for the Lord that needs to be done. We've got to keep going. We've got to keep doing. And not to save us or anything like that. But God's been so good to me. I want to have some fruits in my life to be able to give back to Him when I get to heaven one day. And in verse number four, He says, is it time for you? He says, it's time for you. You better wake up. Because look at what this says. And I'm telling you, this is, it gets a little deep here. It says, O ye to dwell in your sealed houses. He calls it sealed houses, and that's interesting this morning. Those sealed houses is referring to the roof, and it was paneled with fine woods. Now, they're not talking about the temple. The temple isn't completed. The temple don't have that sealed roof. That temple don't have everything that it has. But these fine woods is a practice among the residents. Residences, and specifically, it's a practice among the kings during this time. Meaning you had to be somebody to have these sealed, uh, these sealed roofs, these, the, these nice houses. 
Uh, just as, as a background, in 1 Kings 7 and 7, when talking about Solomon's porch, it says that he made a porch from the throne that he might judge, and the porch of judgment was covered with cedar. Solomon, he had that. He had it covered in cedar. That's that sealed house that's there. And in verse number in Jeremiah 22, 14, the king of Judah says, I will build me a wide house with and a large chambers and cutteth him out windows and it is sealed with cedar and painted with vermilion. So that roof was 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 cedar, but it wasn't just cedar; it was sealed as well. It was painted as well. So what what are you saying? I'm just saying these kings had it all, and Haggai is putting the people in the same context as the king. Now you think about that just a minute. He's saying you don't have time for God, but you've got time for yourself. He's saying you don't have time to continue this work of the Lord, but you're investing in yourself. In other words, what he's saying is, yes, that opposition come and you've got tore up, you've got bent up. You, the first thing to go out of your life is church. The first thing to go out of your life is that rebuilding of the temple. But I want you to look. I want you, let's just take a stroll to your house just a minute. Your house is in good shape. Your house has got those sealed porches. Your house has got it all. And in other words, what, what he's saying here in this text is he's saying you're living like a king. And I'm telling you this morning from, from, the, from the high up in this church to the lowest in this church. You put our houses uh, at, at some of these foreign lands and we are living like kings. And let me tell you, we're all living like kings. We all have it. And he says, look around. And he says, you're blessed beyond all measure. And in verse number four, he says, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste? You're living in those sealed houses. God has been blessed to you that even your roofs uh, of your houses, they're something. And hey, I say, and he says, Hey, you just need to recount your blessings. And I'm telling you this for a moment right now. If we're going to. Uh, uh, continue this restoration process. We're going to renew it like they're going to do in this text. They're going to start rebuilding. And we want to rebuild this church. I'm not saying rebuild it physically, but I'm saying spiritually and have more folks come in this church. What we got to do is recount every blessing that God has blessed us with. I didn't plan it this morning, but every one of those kids this morning uh, shared this Bible verses on Thanksgiving. My, my, my. How often do we need to be thankful? How often we just need to slow down just a little bit and say, my, I'm thankful for what all I've got. God has been so good. We're blessed beyond all measure. And here in the U.S., it's, it, it, it's not our wants uh, that get us. It's not us uh, in our needs and us. Uh, uh, it's our blessings. We're blessed beyond all measure. We've got our nice houses. We've got our health. We've got our family. We've got our friends. And most of all, we have God, we have salvation, and here we are living in the middle of the Bible Belt. We're living where God has blessed us beyond all measure. And if we want to renew, we want to restore uh, the work of the Lord, we just need to recount our blessings and think about how good God's been to every single one of us. He's been good. Ain't that a good start to Thanksgiving? Ain't that a good message for the month of November? It's just think about how good he's been. And, he's, and that's what Haggai's saying. He says, is it time for you? You dwell in your sealed houses, and, and here it is, it lies waste. So he, here he is, he says, hey, God's been good to you. God's wanting his work to be redone. He's wanting some families here and here and here, and he's wanting this temple rebuilt in the text. He says, the first thing you need to do is you just need to count all the things God's done. You need to count all the blessings that God's done. Start with that. When you have a bad day, you just start with all the blessings. But not only that, after you count all your blessings and how good you got, you're living like a king pretty much with those sealed houses. Then it says we need to, we need to reconsider our way. We need to reconsider our ways. Recount our blessings, but then reconsider our ways because, hey, that work is not being done. And if the work's not being done, we've got to look back at the ways and see why it's not being done. But look at verse number four. It says, is it time for you? It's time. Why is it time? Well, look at the end of that verse uh, number four. He says, O ye that dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste. 
And he says, now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts. And again, he says, it's not me. Don't worry, it ain't me. It's the Lord speaking. It's not me. He says, the Lord's talking to you. And here's what the Lord is saying. First off in verse 4, is it time? But then the last part of verse 5, consider you way. Time's wasting. You got the altar built. You had some opposition, and yes, there's going to be opposition, and here you are halting his work. Is it time? I believe it's time. He's saying you dwell in your sealed houses. You're blessed beyond all measure. You're investing in you, not in God. That's what he's saying. But then he says, while you're so blessed, you dwell in your sealed houses, this house like waste. This house ain't what it ought to be. The temple that should be built, the whole reason they came back from captivity is to rebuild that temple. That's one of the first things they wanted to do. But now that temple that they started lie waste. That is the devil's ultimate goal. To get you to anything, halt it, let it lie waste, let you forget about it, and before long you can move on to something else and you'll never go back to it. That's the devil's desire. He wants things to lie waste. But in Ezra 5, it lines up with Haggai 1, and we see that it lied waste for 15 years. 15 years of inactivity when you look at Ezra and you look at Haggai. 15 years was lost now. That's a long time. All because there was an adversary and the Jewish people uh, were waiting to rebuild. And what Haggai is saying here is he's saying, hey, I want you to reconsider your ways. I want you to, one, look at how good you got it, recount all your blessings, but I want you to reconsider your ways. The problem of the temple not getting rebuilt, it's a result of your ways. It's a result of you doing what you want to do. The adversary came. The adversary stirred you up a little bit. The adversary uh, caused a few problems. But you're the one that threw in the towel. You're the one that quit. You're the one that left the church first time uh, hard times hit. You just got to stick in. You got to stick in. You want God to stick in. We want, the, uh, we want him to stay with us. And if we want him to stay with us, we got to stay with him. And even though hard times hit and there is an adversary that comes, hey, I say in verse number four, it is time. There's a time there was an adversary, but now you need to reconsider your ways. You look at your ways, look in the mirror, and you will see the problem. And the problem is you need to reconsider your ways. And that's what he says in verse number five, consider your ways. That temple is not being built, and he don't even mention the adversary. He don't say it's his fault that it's being rebuilt. He says it's not rebuilt because you got it going on at home or you got it going on on the job, but you don't have it going on at the house of God. Or he's saying this. He says you need to consider, reconsider your ways. It's not being built because of the way. Now the time is now, folks. I know I didn't want to get no amen. I know. That's just, this is just true of me. It's just what the Bible says. This isn't even me. I'm just reading the Bible. We can't control the past. That's a lot of the present. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. I can't control a lot of the present. But what I can control is, is myself. And what he's saying here in this text, the prophet speaking from God, is he's saying, you're the one preventing the work. You're the one holding it back. You can, you can look back five years ago and say that was the issue, but here we are now. We're now. That's the past we're here. And yes, there's an adversary. Yes, there's trouble, but here we are now. And I just got to keep on going, keep on doing, and, and just reconsider my ways. Our priorities sometimes just get out of order. That's what they do. They get out of order. Preacher, I don't want to admit it. Well, it, it happens to all of us. It happens to all of us. I, I, there's things sometimes. I said, I just will leave Facebook off my phone this week. I said, it just it takes too much of my time. I don't, we just have to, re, we all do. I'm a pastor. I have to reconsider my ways sometimes. We all have to reconsider 
and just get relined up with what God would desire, what would be pleasing to him. And he says in verse 4, we have our sealed houses, and, and you're blessed beyond all measure. You look and you, you've got it. You, you, you compare yourself to anybody else, you've got it. You've got the sealed houses like the king. But here's the thing, you just got to reconsider your ways. The issue that going on here is they just need to reconsider their ways. And the issue going on is, well, what, the, what way do they need to reconsider? It's the building of the temple. God's kingdom, still to this day, needs to be built. He's not done. I don't know if we've not, we've not got the stop sign at Roaring Creek or the red. We still don't have a red light on Roaring Creek. We've not got a red light saying, hey, you've got to stop. We just keep going. And we've got to keep going. We've not seen the last soul saved in, I don't even think, this community let alone Haver County. I still think there's people hurting, there's people broken, and what needs to happen is we just have to uh, re reconsider our ways. Look back at our ways and say, hey, what is my priority? Is my priority myself? Is my priority others? Is my priority the things that I want to do, my flesh wants to do? Or is my priority what God desires? How relevant is it today you look at God's house versus our house. I tell you, we, we get a leak at our house. My gosh, we'd be on it the first thing, but we would. Let's be on it. But you know, a lot of times we just brush it under the rug. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. We've done so much to the church, and I'm so thankful for the church. And I'm thankful for all of you because I can't do nothing to get fixed nothing. And I'm not fussing at nothing. But all I'm saying is we just got to keep on. We got to keep on. Why? Because if we let it lie waste and we start thinking about our home houses more than God's house, before long, we're going to lose family, lose our desire, lose our passion. The one thing broken will be the next thing broken. You always, we always have to uh, labor for the Lord. Always labor. See, what God desires for all of us is he desires our first fruits, the very first. He wants the very first to be him. The very first of our heart to be him. The very first of our time to be him. Our very first of our giving to be him. Not to think of ourselves. And that's what he's saying there in that text. And I know if we was to read that, you've got your sealed houses, we might not understand that. But all he's saying is, you're living so luxuriously. You have it going on. And the things of God are lying waste, and they're lying waste for 15 years. But here's the thing. You'd think after one year, if God would have given up. You'd think five years, God would have given up. Ten years, God would have 15 years. But it's God's work. He, he still has a plan. The only thing that has to take place is in verse number five, consider your ways. Just consider them. It means just think about it. Just, just, just consider, consider what's your priority. Make a list of the time in the day, those 24 hours, and consider how much of that is going to God. He's just saying consider your ways. I tell you, we all do that, and it's, it, it, it hurts. It hurts us all because we're so busy. We get so, it's all of us. But we just sometimes we have to reconsider and just consider our ways. And that's exactly what he tells them to do. In verse number 5, he says, Therefore, thus the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. But then in verse number 7, look what he says. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Again, he says to consider their ways. And he wants them to consider their ways because look. He says, Ye have so much and bring in little. Ye eat, but you have not enough. Ye drink, and you're not filled with drink. Ye clothe, but there's none warm. And ye earneth wages, and earneth wages to put it in a bag with holes. You think about that. You know what he's saying? He's saying anything we invest in this world, you just keep putting it in a bag, and it's just going to keep dropping. You're just, you're never going to be able to, it's a, it's a bottomless pit of this world trying to please. Just reconsider your way. Get, get back to the things of God. In other words, you've got drink, but you're, you're always thirsty. You're, all, you're always eating, but you're never full. 
You're filling up those bags with your wages and the bags got holes in them. They're, you never have enough. That's why he's saying, reconsider your ways. We cannot forget that this is not the prophet sending the message. This is God. The word is coming from the Lord. In verse number one, look what it says. It says in verse number one, it says, came the word, came the word of the Lord by Haggai. In verse number two, it says, thus speaketh the Lord of hosts. In verse number five, it says, thus saith the Lord of hosts. In verse number seven, it says, thus saith the Lord of hosts. He's just the messenger. I'm just the messenger this morning. And I think in 2022, we've... We, we, was, we was just praying over the last few years. I just want things to get back to normal. I don't want to have to wear that mask forever. I just want things to get back to normal. Here they are. They are normal. Yes, the work seemed like it halted. You couldn't go visit people in the hospital. We couldn't go knock on doors. We was afraid of bringing something. But now we're back to some normalcy. God has brought things front and center and the message is coming from the Lord and he's saying, hey, just consider your ways. Once you, number one, recount your blessings, number two, just reconsider your ways. Seems like time goes so quickly, don't it? I told them in Sunday school, we got one month and it'll be Christmas now. That's amazing to me. Time is so, so fast. Each day passes. But he sent these messengers after 15 years. And I'd say the same thing happened to them. Ah, we'll do it next week. Ah, we'll do it next week. And before long, a year's passed. Five years passed. And the longer time passes, the less likely that stuff is to get done. Man, how we need to re restore and rebuild and renew what God wants done. Lastly, this, this morning, we see here that you recount how good God's been to you. And then we've seen that we reconsider the ways. We said, hey, I'm going to look at the way I'm going. That way's not right. But what's the last thing that we need to do? We just need to renew our work for the Lord. Renew our fruits. Have, have fruit for the Lord. Because there comes a time sometimes we, we do get off track and we do need to reconsider our ways and get back on track. And as a result, we've got to re, re, just renew our work. In other words, maybe there's a Christian here this morning that, uh, yes, you're saved. You know 110% that you're going to heaven. But do you need to just renew yourself and recommit yourself and say, man, God, you've been good to me. I, but I think about my way, and my way ain't the way it needs to be. It's not all to, uh, for you. I'm so distracted. I'm getting distraught. There's so many things going on, and I can relate to this text. There is adversary in my life, and I don't want to quit on you, Lord. I just need to renew my work for you. That's what happens. And here it is, just a messenger sharing what God's told him to share. And in verse number 5, it says, Saith the Lord of hosts to consider your ways. And in verse 7, the same thing. Consider your ways. He's just saying, hey, this is the Lord speaking. You just got to listen. But then he says again, this is the Lord speaking. Listen, but then put some action with it. Not just listen, but hear it and put action with it. God's just trying to get their attention. I think he's trying to get our attention. He's not done with us. He wants us to keep going. He, he, we, we, we got to keep doing for him. They recounted their blessings and realized how blessed they were. They reconsidered their ways and decided, hey, God deserves it all. But I ain't going to just say I'm blessed. I ain't going to say just God deserves it all. I'm going to give it all to him. And that is uh, what they decided to do. And look at their instruction. God has some instructions for them. Look at verse number 8. He says, Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house. And I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Hey, wait, wait, wait. You say, well, they've not done that for 15 years. How can God give glory? That's a lie of the devil, okay? The devil says God can't give glory. 
This is God's word. God will get glory. He tells him to go up on that mountain. He tells him to build the house. He says he'll take pleasure. He says that he, he will be glorified. In verse number 9, he says, And ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when ye brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts? Because my house, that is waste, and ye ran every man into his own house. Therefore, the heaven over you is stayed with dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I called for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and the new wine, and the oil, and brought upon the, the, bringeth, brought upon the ground that bringeth forth, and upon men, and called upon the cattle, and the labor of his hands. And, and then Jerubal, the son of Shaphil, and Joshua, the son of Josedek, and the high priest, with the remnant of the people, obeyed, look at that, they obeyed the voice of the Lord. God and the words of Haggai the prophet and the Lord their God had sent him. And the people did fear the Lord. Did they get scared and run back home to their sealed houses? No. But they had a renewed spirit. They renewed their relationship with God. They got right. They thought about how good they had it. They said, hey, I ain't doing what I ought to do. I've got to reconsider my ways. And then they said, hey, I'm going to fear you, and I'm going to give you reverence, and I'm going to do anything that you want me to do. I believe there's a Christian out here in this morning. I believe there could be families here this morning, and that's the message that he wants or heard this morning, is he wants somebody, almost like renewing our wedding vows. He wants us to renew our vows to him and say, and come around and gather around this altar. He wants us to say, hey, I'm all in. I'm in with you. I know you've blessed me. I know I've gotten off the way. But I know this as well, that I'm going to renew my work. I'm going to do what you told me to do. And, and I just want to renew my relationship with you. Because I'm telling you, that relationship with him, it's serious business. It's not a game. We sometimes think it's a game. But I believe the end of verse number 12 says, The people did fear the Lord. They feared him. Why is that? Because it's real. It is real. The message this morning is no different than the message coming from the prophet in the text. And he's just saying, hey, it's lying waste. We could use a youth leader. We could use a song leader. We could use a Sunday school teacher. We could use a prayer warrior. We could just use a young kids, a young family. We could use this. We need this. Why quit? Why give up? Just reconsider our ways. Let's get back on track and, and have fear for of God. Have enough reverence of God to say, my gosh, Lord, you created it all. You can give it all. But he's going to use us in the process. And he wants to use us. He, he wants us. The question is this morning, do you have fruit in your life? Do you, do you have uh, fruit in your life? Or who are you living for? Are you living for God or are we living for ourselves? If this text is speaking of sealed houses, is that us? I'd say it's all of us. To be honest, we've all been blessed. God's been so good to us all. But we need to renew this restoration. Renew the rebuilding of God's kingdom. And for us, it's Royal Creek Missionary Baptist. How do we renew our work? Well, the same work and the same energy that got us to the 150th last year, we've just got to tighten our belts, put our, our, our boots on, and just get at it again. That's what we got to do. we just got to get back at it. And maybe this time, it's not about a building. It's about people. I don't know. I don't know what the Lord wants. It's a personal decision. It's a personal relationship. But I do know this. His desire is fruit in our life, but that way we can give it back to Him in the end. He also desires us to be for him and not for ourselves. He desires us to be saved. I just wonder whose team you're on this morning. Does he know whose team you're on? Do you have that fear of the Lord that they talked about there in verse number 12? Do you have that fear before the Lord? They didn't, it didn't say fear of the Lord. It said fear before the Lord. They had reverence before him because uh, he, he was... It, it, this is it. They didn't have reverence 
of the Lord. It says in verse number 12, they had a fear before the Lord. I believe the Lord's here this morning. He's just like me. And here you are before him. Do you have the fear before him? Not fear of him. Not reverence of him. But I'm just saying, I believe he's here this morning. And I believe he gave us this message this morning. And before him with the line drawn, do we have that fear? What should we do? What do we need to do? Gary, go to the piano and play something softly. That's the message this morning. You just mind.